Hello everyone and welcome to my new video and what is this video about? Well, I'm here in Max 8 and I'm going to make a video sequencer that's also a synthesizer sequencer. They're going to be like a kind of hybrid. I'm going to generate frames of matrix data, um, like generatively, which I'm then going to use to disform a 3D mesh but also I'm going to use that matrix data to create a synthesizer using an object called JIT.peak, which reads through matrix data in order to generate a sound. It's very interesting. So it's going to kind of be a, an, a visually generated audio synth and visualizer rave station. <laughs> so there's going to be a lot to get through. Hopefully it won't be too long but I have to get this out there because I think it's personally very exciting. So let's start with, well, first of all, I'm going to turn on the grid and I'm going to go snap to grid and I'm going to create, um, first I'm going to create my JIT.world. Oh my God, already I can't type JIT.world, uh, which is where all the visuals are going to end up. And I'm just going to put a couple of attributes in here at floating one so that it floats on top and at enable one so that I don't have to turn it on. And I'm going to say at erase color 0001, which should create a black square. There it is. That is my world, an eternal void. So, right, that's that's our starting point. And then I'm just going to quickly create a send render bang so that I can send a bang to... Uh, the rest of the patch at 30 frames a second. Actually, why don't we just say at FPS uh, 30 frames a second. Okay, so we've got our world. Now, um, okay, so this is where all our visuals are going to end up in this world here. So let's start with that. I want to generate a sequence of randomly generated frames of pixel data, um, which I can store and sort of acts, uh, index through using a sequencer. Um, to start with, I'm going to generate the noise and I'm going to do that with JIT. Oh my God, can't type today, JIT.noise. I want, um, I'm gonna say uh, three planes of data, uh, float 32 type data, and I'll just, the dimensions don't matter too much right now, but I'll just say 20 by 20, okay. So if I create a bang here, connect that there, P window and bang that, then we'll get some noise way rave. Okay, but I want to generate those frames um, a certain amount of times um, in one event. So to do that, I'm going to use Uzi. Uzi sends many bang messages, um, and I want to send 16 of them. So let's look at what happens when I connect the Uzi to the print, and we can see it's already done some stuff. Let's clear that, and let's send a bang to the Uzi. Bang, and then we get 16 bangs. Bang, 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 bang. So we're going to use those bangs to generate a series of events in order to fill up our sequencer with frames of noise data. What are we going to use to store the frames of noise data? We're going to use JIT.matrix set. And I believe we probably want it to have the same uh, arguments as the noise. So let's say three planes of data, float 32 type data, but I want the, I want it to be a hundred by 100 pixels because I'm actually going to, what's that say? Float 32, bad number, warning, attempting to allocate matrix with less than one plane. Well, far. let's have a look here. Oh, I didn't specify the amount of frames I want. Okay. So let's say 15 frames. Okay. So this is where we're going to store our 15 frames of noise data generated by the JIT.noise. How are we going to do that? We do that with the index message. So I'm going to go prepend index and I'm going to connect that to that. And now I kind of need to set up a way for this all to happen in, with one button, with one bang. 
the Uzi is going to send 16 bangs. I'm going to use those 16 bangs to create 16 messages in order to fill up this matrix set with 16 frames of noise data generated by JIT.noise. Oh, how am I going to do that? Well, first, let's make a counter and let's say count from 0 to, six, to 15. Series 15. So if I connect that to the Uzi and we look at the max window again, let's clear that. Okay, it's gone 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10, 10. Okay, so it's banged and counted from 0 to 15. So I'm going to use that to index through the matrix set in order to store the frames. So I guess we can just straight up just connect that to that. And then I want to generate those 16 frames with the JIT.noise, but I want to change them on each frame. I don't want each frame to be the same dimensions or something. I want to change the dimensions each time. So I'm going to go pack dim 00. zero. So this means that I'll be able to change the dimensions of the JIT.noise dynamically. And I want to generate random numbers. So I'll go random, uh, let's say, well, we can, let's to start with, let's say 20, but we'll be able to dynamically change that as we go along. So I'll put that in there and then I'll create another one and put that one in there. Okay. And I just need to neaten that up a little bit. Right. So now we need to decide in which order we're going to trigger all these events. So let's create a T, not a toggle, a T. We want to bang the noise, the JIT.noise. Uh, we want to bang the counter and we want to bang those two random number generators. So let's come out of this, let's disconnect that. Let's connect the Uzi to this trigger. The first bang, we want to trigger the random, this random here. The second bang, we want to trigger that random. The third bang, we want to trigger the counter. And the final bang, we want to trigger the noise. That might not be the right way around, but let's see if it works. Let's create a P window so that we can see if this is working. Let's bang. All right, so nothing happened. Let's just have a look here. Okay, so we are getting random dimensions on the noise there. So we need to see if it's recorded or stored in the matrix set. So for that, we need the message prepend output matrix. And we'll connect that. And then we just simply take a number, integer number, and scroll through. Hey, it's worked. Brilliant. So we've got, although there's nothing. Yeah. So we've got, you can see, I can go back and forth between frames like that. We've got a little sequence of it's going up to 14 and stopping. Ah, maybe 15 frames isn't enough, actually 16 frames, because I was thinking maybe it starts from zero. So let's let's try that again. Boom, let's go to zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right, so we've got our little sequence frame sequencer. And at any point we can choose to say randomize uh, 100 pixels. And then we'll get more noise like that one. Ooh, pretty. And then we'll have some where there's little noise like here or something like that. And so, and obviously we can go like very, very small amounts of noise data like that. It will make a difference in the end. All right, so uh, I'm gonna keep this stuff and just tidy it up a little bit. Probably don't need the, I'll leave the print there for now. Okay, so let's put this all to one side. I don't need the max console anymore. Let's make a sequencer. So first of all, we're going to use phaser. Phaser is absolutely the best thing in the world. It may not seem like much, but it can be the starting point for so much awesome stuff. A phaser is an MSP object, as you can tell by the wiggly line there which means that we need to turn on the audio. So I'm going to create an easy DAC to enable the audio. And if I um, connect a live scope here, um, we should see nothing happening. Okay, so the reason why that is, is because I've enabled the lock one attribute. Let me tell you what's going on here. One N means that it's going to ramp from zero to one over the course of one bar at a specified tempo, which I will specify. At lock one means that it's going to lock to the transport. So if I stop the transport and restart it, it's going to 
phase from the position it was at when I stopped. Let's create a transport object. And in fact, let's just create a toggle and let's go prepend tempo and connect a number here so I can change the tempo, let's say 120. So now if I start the tempo, the transport rather, so there we go. The phaser is ramping from zero to one um, over the course of one bar at 120 BPM. If I increase the tempo, it's gonna start ramping faster. So this is what I'm going to use to drive the sequencer. I need to make sure that I've got scheduler in overdrive and audio interrupt enabled in the audio status. That means we're gonna get sample accurate timing of the phaser. All right, so good. I'm just gonna have a quick guzzle of some fruit juice. Okay, first of all, I'm gonna select that cable. I'm gonna go shift N and I'm gonna say multiply tilde by 16. Okay, we don't need that scope anymore. So now rather than ramping from zero to one, it's actually ramping from uh, zero to 15. So if we create a number tilde object, we can actually see that that is what's happening. But we've got some floating point numbers in there as well. We're gonna have to sort that out later. So I'm going to take a snapshot of that snapshot will convert um, signal values to numbers. I'm going to bang that snapshot at the same rate as our frame rate. So I'll simply connect my render bang here, connect this to our snapshot, and then if I create a float, all right, we've converted that uh, ramp signal to a floating point number, but we don't want floating point numbers, we want integers. So I'm going to select that cable, do shift N, and I'm going to use a change to filter out repetitions of a number. Now we've just got integers, brilliant. So I can pretty much take that number now and plug that in there, and we've got our sequencer. So that's just cycling through all of those frames, and at any point I can hit the Uzi to generate new frames of data, brilliant. But mm, that's just gonna go round and round. I want to make like an actual sequencer, so. Just gonna get rid of some of this stuff. Um, all right, so I'm going to use an I table, which is a little GUI thing where you can draw in stuff like this, but I want it to be, oh, no, thank you. I want it to be of certain values and I want those values to be, I want the table range to be 16 and the size indeed to be 16. And so what I've got, okay, now I have this little sequencer. And pretty much all I need to do is just use an integer to index through all of these values. So if I connect my change here and then create an integer here, it's cycling through the um, items in the table. So if I sort of went like this, then it's going to go from 1 to 16. Uh, or indeed 0 to 15, which is fine because that's how we're indexing the frames in our matrix set. So I can basically just connect that to that. In fact, let's trash these numbers here. And then I can make a little sequence. So if I just say you want to just move around with these frames, then it's just going to index those frames. Or indeed these frames here like this. It'll stay on a certain frame because it's it's good. It's good. I like it. Right. Okay. So we've got our little sequencer of randomly generated noise data. And at any point, I can hit that Uzi again. I'll put a little comment in here. Generate frames. Let's put that there like that. Um, we don't really need that bang anymore. Let's get rid of that. Okay. So where do we go now? Well, I'm going to put those frames into a new matrix. JIT.matrix. I'm going to give this one a name. I'm going to call it Peaky. And I want it to have the same um, arguments. Three planes, float 32 type data, and dimensions 100 by 100. So even though I'm um, randomly changing the dimensions of the noise that's generating the frames, I always want them to be 100 the, the final result to be 100 frames. And then if a frame is larger, it still doesn't matter because it's going to come out at 100 frames. I'm going to take 100 dimensions. I'm getting so excited about this. I can't even explain it. So I'm going to take my render bang, put that into the matrix so that I can access that data 
that I'm going to store in there at the frame rate of our rendering. So I'm just going to simply make this a bit smaller. Maybe put that over there. And I'm now going to plug the matrix set into this matrix. So why did I call that matrix peaky? Well, um, that's a naming convention that I'm going to use in order to access that the contents of that matrix from another object. And that object is the thing that I'm going to use to generate the sound. And that is JIT. Oh my goodness me, JIT.peak. I'm going to give it the name Peaky, the same as the matrix over here. So essentially, I'm going to use JIT.peak to read, to access what's in this matrix. But I'm going to do that using signals. I'm going to do that using a cycle. Um, and I'm going to take a float and I'm going to say cycle. I need you to cycle like the wind. So if I give it one hertz, that's cycling up and down at one hertz. Um, I actually don't want it to go from minus one to one. So hmm, let me think about that. Maybe I'll scale it. Or maybe I could just do some maths. Let's go multiply. Let's go multiply tilde by two, and then uh, minus. Oops, minus one. No. <laughs> oh no, that's fine. I'll use scale. Scale. Oops, scale tilde minus one to one, zero to one. In fact, I could actually say zero to 100, yeah, because I need to multiply that signal by the amount of dimensions in my matrix. Otherwise, it's just gonna read through one like dimension. So actually that makes better sense. Let's have a look what it's doing. So now it's going up and down from uh, zero to 100. Okay, so let's simply connect that to that and that. So this is gonna read through, I believe the X coordinate dimensions, and this is going to read through the Y, or just says DIM1 and DIM0. Anyway, let's make a live gain. It's already making sound. It's already making sound. This is exciting. Okay, let's now connect. Well, let's turn the gain down, and let's connect that to our easy DAC and see what it's doing. Oh, nasty clicks. Okay, let's try 100 hertz. Yes. Happy time. So my assumption is, is that the data that's being generated in this matrix is kind of like a wavetable of sorts. I'm not seeing it like that, but the results that come out sound like that depending on how many sort of pixels there are, um, makes an impact on the amount of harmonics there are in the sound. So if I generated um, some pixels with a large, well, some frames with a large, large amount of pixel data, we'll get more harmonic. And if we do it with less, let's say like two by two, or uh, maybe that's too little, let's try three by three. Get more mellow sounds. Let's go 10 by 10. And then we can use our sequencer to index around the frames, make a sequence. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Um, where can we go from there? Well, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do a little bit of tidying up, and I'll just put that maybe over there, and maybe we can put this here. Uh, this doesn't really need to be so big and we're not going to need that later. That's just helping me. Um, okay, so maybe we could use the contents of this table to set the notes of the cycle that's oscillating through JIT.peak to read the frames of the matrix data. <gasps> so how are we going to do that? Well, buried in the Max uh, library is a Max for Live um, b patch m4l dot pitch scale b patch 
Um, if we hover over the left hand, the middle of the left hand side of this and go transform, transform patcher to B patcher, then it gives us this little MIDI scale thing, very similar to the one that's in Ableton. So I can take the number generated by the table and it's already going to start snapping to a scale here. But I'm going to add a little bit of math in there because the numbers are going from 0 to 16, which means we're going to get very low notes. So what I might do is add a number and perhaps even multiply that number just to give me a little bit of variation. So I'll create a couple of integers here, connect that to that, and I'll maybe move move all of this up here. Oh God, it's already getting very cluttered. Um, I'd maybe like to, maybe I can make that horizontal yeah that's 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 good all right let's put that there um let's bring all this down here so what's going to come out now if i do some maths here so i can say add 24 um multiply by two okay so we've got some higher numbers so let's get in a hmm Hmm. Let's get in an M2F and see what we get. We've got a float here. Okay, let's make a float and connect that to our cycle and see what we've got. <laughs> okay, good. Grungy. Okay, let's choose a scale. Okay, it would be nice, I think, to have the option to randomly generate what's in. I mean, of course, I could just click around in here like that, but it would be fun to just have a button to just scramble the contents of that table. So let's use another Uzi. Um, let's say Uzi. Uh, again, let's say 16. And let's bring in another counter. Um, and I believe... Let me just check what this number's doing. It does start at zero, doesn't it? Yeah, okay, so let's say zero to 15. And then let's go pack zero, zero. This one to choose the item, or rather the, I guess you'd call it the, the dimension in the table and a second one to generate a random number between 0 and 15. Um, again, we'll need another trigger, B, B, the first one to generate the random number, and the second one to generate the counter, put that in there. Let's see if this works. Not very good with Uzi. It's a little new to me, even though it's a classic. Let's connect that to that, see if that works. Yes! So now we can generate a little random sequence with a click of a button. I love random clicks. Right. Let's put that. Let's put that here. All right. So we can generate a random sequence if we want, or we can draw in one like this. And this is what we get. Okay, brilliant. I'm just going to have a very short break. Okay, I'm going to just put like comment here, set dims X, and this one could be set dims Y. All right, so, okay, we've got our synth and we've got our pixels, but we don't really want to look at this. We want to make this a lot more interesting. So I'm actually going to use that matrix data to deform, displace the mesh of a OpenGL uh, shape. So I'm going to create a jit.gl.grid shape. I'm going to say at shape. Oh my goodness, can't spell sphere. At dim 100 by 100. At smooth shading. I guess I don't need to turn on smooth shading. But let's do it anyway. At smooth shading one and at matrix output one and at gl underscore color one 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 one, which should give us a white sphere. Now we can't see it at the moment because we're outputting the matrix. And I'm going to output that matrix to a 
uh, to a mesh. So I'm going to create a jit.gl.mesh. Um, that'll do for now. So if I connect the grid shape to the mesh, we have a white sphere. Okay. So simple as it is, I'm just going to multiply all of the data coming out from the matrix from the sphere by the data generated by this part of the patch over here. I can simply do that with jit.multiply and connect that to that. Ooh, there we go. Let's have a listen to What I like about it is that once you've generated the sequence, which is repetitive and musical, you can repopulate the contents of each frame, but maintain the sequence. So you can kind of morph the sequence. Okay, I don't, I don't, I don't want all those colors. So I'm going to change the plane count of the jit dot noise to one. See what that gives. Yeah. Okay. Now we've just got black and white, gray. Marvelous. Um, I'm going to quickly create. Oh, I'm starting to run out of space. Jit dot handle. Sorry, jit dot gl dot handle. Connect that to the world. Quickly make a reset message. And now I can mouse around and explore what's going on here. Ooh, okay, so it's making some interesting shapes. Already I know I'm gonna have loads of fun. Okay, so it's very interesting, the sound that it's making, but it is a little bit harsh. So let's put a filter in there. Basically, we've got a synthesizer now and you can treat this like you would with any synthesizer. If, you, if you've built a synthesizer in Max before, using things like filters, envelopes, um, all that sort of good stuff, you can basically do exactly the same thing with jit.peak. So I'm gonna make a uh, low res and put that in there and create a live dial, right click it, go to prototype and choose frequency. And now I can filter it a little bit. Um, I'm going to create another live dial, go to prototype, go to Q, and no, I don't want it to go from, I don't want it to do that. So let's go to the, let's go to the inspector. And I want it to go from zero to 0 0.99. All right. And now we've got a very, very simple filter with cutoff and resonance. Okay, so that's going to have a tendency to scream. So let's clip it. Let's go clip. Oh my goodness. Clip. Minus, uh, minus 0 0.9 to 0 0.9. So no matter what happens, um, it's not going to blow up the, the entire universe if it starts to scream like filters can do sometimes. Let's have a look. Oh, let's turn this up. Oh my, wow. Ooh, okay. So. All right, we're getting somewhere. We've got our video sequencer and our synth reacting to the frames of data in the sequencer. So what else can we do? Well, we could maybe put um, some stuff in this part here, like um, jit.slide, to smooth some of the frames as they move from one to the other. Do I want that at this point? Or do I want it here? Let's try both. So I'm just going to make a message here. Slide down dollar one comma slide underscore up 
dollar one. Uh, create a float here. Connect that to the JIT dot slide. And let's put this here. And let's give it a value like. There we go. So it's added a little bit of slide. You can see how it's not moving so janky. Okay, and we can slide that even more like that. <laughs> I, really, I really like it. Um, okay, I'm going to add some more stuff here. Um, I'm going to take the audio that's coming from JIT.peak and run it into a JIT.cache um, at mode two, I think, um, and use that to add a little bit of flutter. So if we have a look, we're going to need a render bang here. Where's a render bang? Okay. I need a render bang here to bang the JIT dot catch. So that is a that's the audio in matrix form, and I can use that to add a little bit of flutter to our shape so that it doesn't look so static when the sound is happening. I'm going to use JIT dot multi not that JIT dot multiply, and I'm just going to give it a default value of 0 0.1. Put that in there. So that's just going to make it less bright. And then I'm going to add that to this uh, before the slide or after it. Yeah, before the slide. So I'm going to go JIT dot plus and I'm going to add that to the plus. All right, so let's take a, we don't need that anymore. Let's take a floating point number here, connect that to that and maybe increase it to 0.5. All right, so now you can see that it's fluttering a little bit. Okay, that's that's a little bit much. Maybe I don't want this plus before the slide. Let's put it after the slide and see what kind of difference this makes. Okay, yeah, that's, that's too much though. We want a low number. There we go. And now if we add a bit of... All right. I do like that sound, um, but it is a little, um, it needs a bit of oomph, oomphy. So I'm just going to add a, um, I'm basically just going to, what am I going to do? I'm just to add a sub oscillator to it. Um, so let's create another cycle here and let's take the output of the frequency, but divide it by, or I'm going to multiply. I know it's the same thing. I'm going to multiply it by half. So, if we make a comparison here, this is giving me a very low number. This is giving me twice that number. Okay, so let's use that to set the frequency of our sub oscillator. And then I'll just make a little multiply here um, that I can then control how much sub I want. And then let's just add that to uh, this part, this part of the patch here. Let's go add and see what we get. Yeah! Don't sound so lame anymore. It's got a bit more fat. It's fat, mate!
good. I can just get lost. I can get lost in this. Um, all right, so this is pretty cool. I'm just going to save this just in case something awful happens whilst I'm shooting this video. Um, I'll save it in my video sec folder. That's my practice patch. I'm going to call this matrix uh, set sec YouTube. Um, all right, so if anything dreadful happens, hopefully it won't. So we've got some stuff that we can explore here, particularly with the with the jit.gl.mesh. There are different draw modes. If we right click the um, leftmost inlet, we can look at all the different attributes and messages that we can explore. So we've got draw mode here, and these are the different types of draw modes that we can explore. We've got line loop, which I like very much, which just gives us lines like this. Very old school, sort of late 80s vector art, but um, I think it's quite quaint. Um, then we've got like polygons and stuff like this. Um, and we can do some stuff with materials to light it a little bit. Um, let's see what we can do with that. Let's create a jit.gl.material, connect that to the mesh and see what we get. Oh, now we've got some materials. Um, and then effectively, I think, oh no, we can still use the, yeah, we can still use. So now we've got some uh, material added to it, which just makes it look a little bit more funky. Um, all right. It's gonna glitch out whilst I'm patching it, but. All right, maybe I can add a light. Uh, Jit.gl. Oh, not live. Jit.gl.light um, at type point at look at 000, zero, zero at position. Uh, let's try 002. Zero, zero, or let's try 00 zero, minus zero, 2. Okay, 002. Zero, zero, Let's reset the handle here. Yep, yeah, that's looking pretty good to me. All right, so we've got our light. Maybe we could move the light around. Where's the position? Let's see what happens if we move the light around. Yeah, that's nice. So we could do something with that. Okay, I'm gonna make a little light, moving light. So I'm gonna use jit.time.perlin um, at speed. 0 0.1 at scale 2. So this jit.time, I believe, is creating numbers at the frame rate of the current rendering. Don't quote me on that. That's just what I've understood. Because otherwise you could just make something like this in gen. But with jit.time, I believe that it's automatically synced to the frame rate of the rendering. Again, I'm not 100% sure. So I'm just going to create uh, three of these. Uh, maybe let's start with two, and then I'm going to make a pack. I'm going to say pack position zero, zero, 002. So the Z axis position, I'm going to leave at two, but I want to screw around with the X and Y position. So let's take these two jet.time.perlins, connect them to this pack, connect the pack to the light, and now the light should be moving around a bit. No. Oh, these need to be floats. Okay, zero float, zero float, uh, two float. All right, now we've got the light moving around. Just gives it a little bit of ambience, you know, it's wiggling around. That's nice. And indeed, let's do the similar thing with the position of our mesh. I'll put that down there. I'm going to create, um, I'm going to copy these. No, no, I'll just copy this one. I'm going to say it's speed 0 0.1 at scale 360, because I'm going to rotate on the X, Y, Z axis. Um, and I'm just going to make a thing here, prepend speed. And then I'm going to control that with a float here. So I'm going to take two more of these. And again, pack them into a message. No, thanks. No. Thank you. Right. Pack, uh, rotate, X, Y, Z. Zero float, zero float, zero float. So connect that to that one, connect that to that one, connect that to that one, and then we get a message, rotate X, Y, Z, 
Yeah, we've got our numbers. Let's connect that to the mesh. And now it's rotating around, but that's a little fast. So let's say go 0 0.01. There we go. So now that's just rotating in space. want we could actually dynamically change the dimensions of the grid shape um, just to see what that gives us so we just get less lines if we want or well, we could try 100 here and 10 here yeah we got less lines um, we can also change the line width of the mesh where would that be line width line width there we go we could give it a line width of like five not 50 five that's not even, that didn't work. <laughs> Why didn't that work? Why is the line width the same? Ah, well, far. All right, let's just, all right, fine. Thanks. Thanks, jit.gl mesh. Um, I don't need to worry about that. So, yeah, so we can decrease the um, dimensions of the grid shape to give us something a little more austere, or of course we can give it high dimensions to give something more detailed. I like the light moving around, that's nice. And the slow rotation of the object makes it a little less static. Oh my goodness me, sorry. We can increase the speed of the rotation if we want like that with this. Make it whiz around. I like it to go very slowly. All right, so oh, let's save that again. Yeah, this is already looking fun. I mean, you know, we'd have to tidy this up a little bit. Um, and then, of course, you know, we could add more things like add some samples to play beats or, you know, add some effects or whatever. Basically, the core of it is this sort of rave baseline and geometry mangler thing um Yeah, it's the sort of, it's the repetitive nature of it that I find quite gratifying. So there isn't really a huge amount of stuff I could do. Um, of course, as I said earlier, once you've got the sound coming out of JIT.peak, you can then build your synthesizer however you want it to. So if you want to add an envelope to the filter, you can add one. If you wanted to add an envelope to the uh, amplitude and all that sort of stuff, add some pitch modulation to make them more percussive. I'm not going to do that now because that's just going to take too long. But I will add just a little bit of post-processing on the final render and I will do that. Where will I do that? Let's do that up here. So let's do jit.gl.pass at effects name bloom hq and let's say at threshold um, 0.75. All right, I've just added a little bit of bloom to that. That's all looking good. We could also change the material if we, with the patch locked. If we double click the jit.gl material, we've got different, ed we've got this editor. We can change all this stuff. Oh, looks nice. It's a good starting point. We can make it look like that. <laughs> um, I, I, I did want to do this video using jit.gl.pbr, but um, I didn't have time to download any of those, all the stuff, you know, that you're supposed to load into it. So I'm just using, um, uh, .gl 
jit.material material, but uh, I will do some jit.gr PBR stuff later because it's cool. All right, that is pretty much it for now. I think that was already a lot to cover, but maybe I will pick up uh, this patch in the future and make more stuff with it and turn it into some sort of instrument. So I hope you had a nice time. I'm going to go and put this patch on my Patreon now where you can download it and uh, pretty much everything else by subscribing using a tier of your choice. That's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. <laughs>